Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Watercolor Scientist, where we ask weird questions, we test our hypotheses, and we share our results with the world. And today, we're starting a brand new series called Mastering Pigments, where we take one pigment at a time and break down its history, chemistry, artist usage, real world behavior, and my favorite mixes. And we're kicking it off today with a legend of a pigment. Cadmium Red, whose pigment code is PR108. Cadmium pigments were discovered in the 1820s, but Cadmium Red uh, really didn't become widely available until the early 20th century. But once it hit the market, then everything changed. Artists suddenly had to have it because it was a red that was bold, brilliant, opaque, and most importantly, light fast. No more fugitive carmine paints, no more darkening vermilion paints that end up changing color on you. It became a favorite for painters who wanted power and permanence. Uh, for example, um, Henri Matisse, especially in his Fauvis years, Georgia O'Keeffe, who use cadmium pigments for their reliability and covering power. Paul Klee, who used cadmium red in his precise color studies. Andy Warhol in Red Maryland. Uh, Mark Rothko, whose Seagram murals relied on these very saturated reds. Uh, Adolf Gottlieb, or I guess his name might be pronounced Gottlieb, um, in cadmium red above black, and Pierre Mondrian in his beautiful composition in red, blue, and yellow. Chemically, cadmium red is a cadmium sulfoselenide pigment. So sulfo meaning sulfur and selenide meaning selenium. And its hue depends on the ratio of selenium to sulfur. More sulfur is more like your cadmium red light and your cadmium scarlet, which is much more orange leaning. More selenium is your cadmium red deep, which is more crimson leaning. But no matter which variety, cadmium red is extremely light fast. It has a very high tinting strength, a buttery, powdery, very dense texture, and it's naturally opaque which is part of what makes it so punchy. Before we move on, I do want to acknowledge the environmental impact of cadmium pigments. Um, cadmium is a heavy metal. And while it is safe to use watercolor uh, made with cadmium pigments, as long as they are not ingested or aerosolized and then breathed in, the actual manufacturing and disposal of cadmium containing materials can cause environmental harm if it's not managed responsibly. This is a huge and really important topic. And I have a lot of tips and tricks on how to reduce uh, your environmental impact when you're watercoloring. But I will be discussing that in an upcoming video, not today. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that. For this video, I'll be examining several cadmium reds from my collection, but for the actual color mixing, I'll be focusing on the two that I think are the best, in my opinion. <laughs> the Roman Small Aquarius uh, Cadmium Vermilion, which is of course PR108, and Coors Cadmium Purple, which is of course PR108. Both of these brands are very vibrant and opaque. They re-wet beautifully and they both have extremely high tinting strength. Cadmium vermilion, as you can see, leans much more orange and cadmium purple leans cooler and also has a bigger drying shift, although cadmiums in general kind of have a, a large drying shift. Both are very velvety and powdery and smooth um, and you can see from the this swatch card that cadmium vermilion has much more dispersion and flow and the cadmium purple actually has a lot less and we'll see that uh, a little bit later as well. Um, 
I'll be using some favorite mixing partners with cadmium red and all of the swatches are on 100% cotton cold pressed paper. So as far as mass tone, um, cadmium reds are very warm and they can range, as we already know, from your very orangey, scarlety colors to crimson to purple. So you can see on this large swatch card that, um, you know, it can get as orange as this cadmium orange by Blick. It's still PR 108, um, but you can see that it can get really, really orange. And it's especially um, uh, evident when you compare it to this cadmium purple, um, even though they're both the same pigment. Um, but, uh, you know, PR 108 in general, no matter the hue, the complement to them is almost always somewhere in the turquoise region, somewhere between a phthalo blue, phthalo turquoise, a cobalt turquoise, the PB36 variety. Um, as far as the opacity, this pigment is semi-opaque to opaque, especially in mass tone. Um, the, you know, this very characteristic opacity gives it this incredible covering power. Um, that like vibrant opaque red that we sometimes need in a painting and that other pigments like Pyrrol Red, PR254, and Pyrrol Scarlet, PR255, just can't give us. Uh, you can see from here that Windsor & Newton's offerings, both the Cadmium Scarlet and the Cadmium Red, are actually much more uh, in the semi-transparent um, area even in mass tone. So they tend to be more transparent. Um, and then when cadmium red in general is diluted, you can see that all of them are really transparent and lend themselves to these like beautiful, even washes. Um, and they are not uh, very prone to cauliflowers and backgrounds in my experience. I do want to note that even though cadmium red and watercolor is opaque, um, it is still not gouache like you can see from my swatch here of cadmium red by Shinhan uh, designer gouache that gouache still has a much uh, more uh, much bigger like um, opacity and covering power um, and it's it's not the same as cadmium red in watercolor at all as far as rewetting cadmium reds are surprisingly easy to rewet um, I always think of um, paints with heavy metals as being difficult to rewet, but not cadmium reds in general, in my opinion. Um, and this is especially true if the paint is formulated with a honey-based binder. So here, uh, Roman Small and M. Graham are the easiest to rewet. M. Graham, cadmium red light, which is another favorite of mine. You just barely touch it with the brush and it rewets instantly, and I really like that. Tinting strength wise, cadmium red tinting strength tends to be very high and it very easily dominates um, in mixes, especially with transparent pigments. And I find it a little bit challenging to mix cadmium red with yellow um, because yellow pigments already have a very low tinting strength. And so, you know, um, yeah, I find it really challenging. I like the mixes, but it is hard. So my best advice is that you pick up the tiniest amount with just the, the, you know, the little edge of your brush and you go little by little whenever you're mixing with transparent um, and yellow pigments. And finally, as far as dispersion and flow, um, this is very variable among different brands. As um, I showcased earlier, Cadmium vermilion disperses extremely well, like most Roman small paints. But interestingly, cadmium purple stays put, unlike other core paints. And all the rest of the cadmium reds, like I said, they're very variable. So they don't have a specific characteristic to all of the cadmium red paints. Finally, with um, you know, now uh, I'd like to talk about mixing behavior in general, you know, what my favorite mixes are. So cadmium red plays well with other paints in the sense that the mixes are very smooth and very uniform and 
cadmium red lends a little bit of body to um to paint in general um so here you can see that some of my favorite mixes include cadmium red with cobalt turquoise the pb36 variety um and that's because with this specific cobalt turquoise it creates these super soft dove grays um it creates these like corally colors and all of these are almost pastel like but without using white pigments which i think is really cool and i often use these for landscapes again to create these like misty effects and um, they can sometimes be useful for florals as well if you want that you know pastel like um coral uh pigment I really like cadmium red with chromium oxide green, PG17. This is actually my favorite of all of the mixes. When you pair cadmium red with another opaque paint, it results in really beautiful, dusty, um, um, like dusty, dull uh, mixes. And I really like that. Um, cadmium red with uh, chromium oxide green uh, leads to these like, dusty brown and taupe hues that I really like in urban landscapes, uh, especially for walls. And I find them very useful uh, to create like, um, uh, like highlights in uh, sidewalks and um, roads and things like that. So I really, I, I like this combination a lot. I always have. Um, cadmium red with Nicolazo yellow, which is PY150 makes very bright very glowy oranges and if you mix the nicolazo yellow with a touch of the cadmium red um it um excuse me with the cadmium purple it makes a really nice yellow ochre dupe um so again if you're carrying a limited palette uh these two play really nicely together and again i like this combination with um when i'm urban sketching for walls and things like that Cadmium red with ultramarine blue. You can see here that you get very muted violets, uh, very moody neutrals. Um, cadmium red and ultramarine blue are not, mm, they're near complements, not complements. You don't quite get that dark gray or dark black, but you do get these like very mu uh, moody, violety neutrals, which I love. And this is also great for landscapes, like landscapes in general, for distant mountains, things like that. Cadmium red and phthalo turquoise. Now, these are um, complements. So you get these very high chroma, deep blue grays that make super dramatic shadows. I like this for urban sketching, and I like this for moody landscapes as well. And they can sometimes be useful in florals as well, especially because I find phthalo turquoise in general to be very useful in florals and cadmium red plays really nicely with it. And then finally, cadmium red and phthalo green. This is also a very useful pairing. It mixes a little bit differently than with the chromium oxide green because that's more yellow. Phthalo green is much more blue. So you can create very moody greens with this pair including a dupe for perylene green if you mix a lot of the phthalo green and just a touch of the cadmium red you get a really really nice perylene green like hue um besides this i wanted to also highlight some convenience mixtures that are related to pr108 in my collection so the first one is vermilion by shinhan uh, pwc and Cadmium Red Light by Rosa Gallery. These are both mixes of PR108 with PO20 that, in my experience, do not really affect the quality of the resulting mixes. And of course, they lean a little bit more orangey. Um, I also have Cobalt Gray by Rosa Gallery, which is a mix of PR108, PB28, and PBK7. This has a very glowy pink undertone when it's diluted thanks to cadmium red and cobalt brown, which is PG26 with PR108, which is very, very nice as well. I really like these. 
And then finally, I did want to draw your attention to Winsor & Newton's Cadmium Free Red. I don't know the pigments in it because those are proprietary secrets to Winsor & Newton. Um, it is semi-opaque though, and it is the correct hue. Um, so I think it is a pretty good dupe for it. Um, but it doesn't have Cadmium Red's like powdery, lustrous, vibrant coverage. Um, and it is equally as expensive. So I think it's a very valid choice for health, you know, reasons or for environmental reasons. Um, and I think it is really pretty close. To really show you what Cadmium Red can do, I want to walk you through a painting that I made. And this is a painting of a moody field of poppies. <laughs> This piece was heavily inspired by a really nice piece in Anne Blockley's book, Experimental Flowers and Watercolor, which I adore. For this painting, I kept things really simple with a limited palette of Nicolazo Yellow, PY150 by Utrecht, French Ultramarine Blue, PB29 by Camel Kikuyo, also sometimes called Camlin paints, I believe, Viridian Green by Da Vinci, which is PG18, and of course, Cadmium Vermilion by Roman Small. I also added some details at the end and at the beginning with a Derwent drawing pencil in ivory black. And so what I really want you to notice here is how vibrant and powerful the Cadmium Red is. The covering power is incredible, especially in these concentrated areas right up against the stems. I pushed the poppies to be really bold and bright so they would pop against the darker stems and the centers. And as expected, Cadmium Vermilion absolutely delivered. I love this painting. In conclusion, Cadmium Red's power lies in its versatility. It mixes fabulous oranges. It mixes fabulous purples. And we found out that it even mixes amazing greens. It neutralizes into these moody, opaque, dusty, shadowy colors. It's a pigment with a long history and a lot to offer to watercolorists who are looking for a statement pigment that is bold, warm, and very light fast. Thank you so much for joining me today in this um, uh, episode of Mastering Pigments. Um, and thank you for being here with me at Watercolor Scientist, where we ask weird questions, test our hypotheses, and we share our results with the world.